Chesterton Academy Sacred Choir, and it's my very great pleasure to welcome all of you to Chesterton Academy's Spring Choir Concert. I hope that you enjoy this program as much as we enjoy preparing for you. We have many, many wonderful, hopefully humorous, and surprising things in store. And I hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much for being here. I know I speak on behalf of all the Chesterton students when I thank you for giving us your time and your support. And on that theme of gratitude, I give you, I guess, our thankfulness song, I would say. We sing it from the four wheels whenever we feel especially grateful. I give you for the beauty of the year. Thank you.
chapter 10 that we all get to participate in things. We all get to sing in choir, but that the teachers will take time with us to make us better. It's something that we really, really enjoy. And that song is an example of where they, Dr. Russell asked us if we would be willing to do something extra and gave up his time to coach us through that. And so we're very grateful to him for the extra work that he puts in to make us all the people that we can be. Our next piece, Oh God Beyond All Praising, is a song that is very dear to my heart. I think I first remember hearing it at some Sunday Mass somewhere, and we were talking about how beautiful the music was, and my mom looked at my dad and I, and she said, you know, I want that song at my funeral. <laughs> and, and I was about, I don't know, 11 or 12, and I was thinking, you know, mom, why are you talking about your funeral? You're, you're not that old yet. <laughs> But as I've gotten older, um, a little wiser, I don't know, I'll leave her to judge that, uh, I started to appreciate the, the tremendous glory that is this song. It has um, an interesting history. The melody of it was written by Gustav Holtz for his great work with the planets. If any of you are familiar with that composition, it takes, it's part of the piece Jupiter, that melody of O God Beyond Praising. But it is also a beautiful, beautiful sacred hymn, and one that has become kind of a Chesterton staple. We have some songs like that where we just kind of pull them out of our back pocket whenever they feel appropriate. Uh, For the Beauty of the Earth is one of those, and this is another one. And one that has been described to me as a moment where the heavens open, and if you had any doubts, they're gone. It's one of those songs where if you think about what it means, you, you're just sitting there in awe. And that is what makes this song thing so special to me and to my mom and to a lot of other people, I'm sure. And I, call me a mother's girl. You're all my witnesses. I want it out my funeral too. <laughs> I hope that most of you are not there for my funeral. I hope that I live longer than that. But just so you know, tell them to stop if they're not playing that song and have them start over. Thank you. Or not.
The next piece we're going to perform is the beginning of our chamber singer set. The chamber singers are a small audition and ensemble that we just started this year at Jefferson Academy. It's open to all grades and both boys and girls. And it gives us the opportunity to do some pieces that for various reasons are pieces that we wouldn't normally do in the full choir. And we get to be exposed to different genres of music and sing in different languages. So it's a really, really great opportunity to get together and work on some different and unique pieces. And the first song that we're going to do for you is called Mata del Anima Sola. And it's in some ways almost the flip of O God Beyond No Crazy. Because O God Beyond No Crazy is just this glorious shake the rafters you know that God is the ruler of the universe kind of song. Like that's what it's supposed to be. And Mata del Anima Sola is it's a, we call it fondly the Venezuelan cowboy song. Um, because in Venezuela they also have cowboys, just not the, you know, rodeo cowboy that we think of, but in the sense that they have people who their job is herding cattle and herding sheep on the, the wide Venezuelan plains. And this song is, is in Spanish, it's in two parts. So the first part is uh, like kind of a fast rhythmic kind of uh, beat. It, it mimics a style of traditional dance called Jeropa, and so it's more upbeat, but then there's this more melancholy section. And the, the premise of the song is that it's about this cowboy named Conte Claro, who's out on the range with his cattle, and it's dark, and it's night, and he's kind of out by himself with his guitar, and sometimes, you know, it's dark. Sometimes it gets really, really, really dark. And all you've got is your guitar and, you know, your horse and whatever. And sometimes you get so lonely, you start talking to the tree and the horse. And so this song is, in, in a sense, the flip of God Me Not Crazy. Not in the sense that it is a song of despair, but in the sense that it's more realistic of the, the fallenness of humanity that we cannot always sense God's presence and His glory in our lives, but we can and should do the best we have with what we have, even if that's like a car and a horse. And even when it's really, really dark and we're really lonely, we can still make music. So this song is called Mata del Anima Sola, which means Tree of the Lonely Soul. Patrick Hatton is going to sing part of the Cowboy Conte Claro, the rest of us will be his guitar, and this is what he's telling us. Tree of a lonely soul, wide opening of the riverside, now you will be able to say, here slept Conte Claro, with the whistle and the sting of the twisting wind, the dappled and violet dusk quietly entered the coral, the night tired near shakes her mane and black tail above the riverside. And in the silence, your ghostly heart is filled with awe.
Leiden. It was written in German. But the same composer who wrote our very first song, Cantate Domino. So they're very, very different pieces. Cantate Domino is a piece of the likes of Agabino and Crazy, just Renaissance era. Um, and Octavius Leiden is a song about parting with a loved one. The first line, Octavius Leiden, Ah, oh, what sorrow I feel, must we part. And it goes on to say that if we must part, it will cost me <coughs> my life. That is the end of that song. And it's a very melancholy piece and contrasts very interestingly with Cantate Domino, Sing to the Lord a New Song, is what that song means in English. And it's, it's very indicative of the period where they were both written by the same man. Uh, the Renaissance, um, as we've been learning in Jewish history, was a time of uh, both great cultural advancement and corruption. So there were all these different ideas and musical styles that were coming into practice, kind of like being invented, I guess, that had never really been a thing. And music had mostly been Gregorian chant in the church, and that was the majority of the composed music, like verbal music, was for sacred use in a very specific form. And there were a lot of beautiful things composed before the Renaissance. But in the Renaissance, music started becoming more of a thing where you could just have secular pieces and people could go and perform them. And there was abuse of this. There were a lot of inappropriate and immoral songs written in the Renaissance. But it was also a time for composers to kind of flex their muscles, I guess, and say, well, I can compose this, and I can also compose that. And that was kind of what this man did. He composed this beautiful, glorious church hymn with these new techniques. And he also branched out and started composing more secular songs about human emotion and the human experience. Because that was one of the big themes of the Renaissance was, what does it mean to be human? And part of being human is being upset. And when you have to leave someone, you... That, that, that is very hard, and he, I think he captures that in this song in a way that is very, very profound. And for what faults that era had, I think, I think we have to be grateful for the, the beauty that came out of it, that people who are as talented as this now have the, the means to use their talents in such a multi-diverse uh, way. Is what I was looking for. That's where the term Renaissance band comes from. They were not just in multiple styles of music could compose, but that they were like Leonardo da Vinci could do a lot of things. But in this case, we're talking about music and the sorrow of parting from a loved one. Octave is like is our next song.
El Grillo, which is written in yet another language, uh, Italian. Uh, and it's also a Renaissance piece, but of a very different nature than Cantante Domino or Acme de Slide. Because one of the things that started also being available in the Renaissance was that you could do frivolous pieces. You couldn't just do, uh, you could do sacred music, you could do secular music, and you could do uh, funny songs. Because uh, they would have, they had funny songs, and, you know, like, entertaining songs, but they were more often folk songs that were passed down, and it wasn't as much done to have someone compose and perform an entertaining song. So, this is, I guess, the third facet of Renaissance music, and it's called El Grillo, which means the cricket in Italian. Some of you may have heard this song from us at the Gala. And it's about a cricket. A cricket who is a very good singer. Really, really good. Very good. And he has a really special talent. He can hold his notes for a really, really long time. He's, he's a very great cricket. So, I hope you enjoy the cricket. Because we really enjoyed the cricket when we were learning this one. So, I hope you enjoy it as well. Very helpful for um, getting in character and being excited in the song. 
Um, and I think that's, as, as odd as this might sound, I think that's very indicative of the relationship that the students at Chesterton have, that people are very committed to um, being involved in what's going on and supporting each other even when you're not singing. And I, obviously that's kind of an odd example of that, but, but I think it's a very, very true example nonetheless. So thank you to the guys for um, your encouragement on this song. Um, and we're excited to give you The Storm is Passing Over.
Well, thank you everybody for being here this evening. It is a great joy, a great pleasure to host you for this concert and to share the work of this semester with you. Ms. Brown spoke earlier about, before Lift Thine Eyes, about the Oratory of Elijah by Felix Mendelssohn. And uh, the whole work is about two and a half hours. And it tells that story of Elijah and his fight against the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel in the whole first half, culminating in that great scene. And the second half is everything that happens to him afterwards. And there is a song that he sings in that piece, It is enough. It is enough, O oh God. How much more can I take? And you see then these angels come and they minister to him. And I think there's a great lesson in that. To do great things, to do difficult things, to do those things that God calls us to, which are oftentimes very, very difficult, requires this great perseverance. There's a great amount of virtue, great amount of fortitude that is required to do that. And then that grace of God. And that is really truly what it takes to do this and to put together a concert like this. And I just want to call your attention here tonight. When we started five years ago, I made the decision we could either do some very, very basic, simple pieces, or we could really go for heavy, difficult literature and heavy programs. And I opted to do that. And this is the result of that tonight. And I just want to share that with you tonight. The level of difficulty, this is professional level work. Collegiate level repertoire beyond. And this is the same choir, essentially, that's been on stage the whole time. It's not a lot of different choirs changing. These are the same singers that have worked hard. And so I just ask that you give these young men and women another round of applause for this incredible work that they've done to be able to do. to amazing grace, and then we'll leave heaven's go for you next, oh boy, this is way. But anyway, <laughs> this couldn't be done without that perseverance, but this also couldn't be done without the efforts of a whole lot of people that are here tonight. And so I want to thank some of those people. First of all, I want to thank all of your parents that are here this evening. I uh, thank you for all of the endless support and encouragement that you have given to them, that you have given to us. We recognize that it is a great honor and privilege to come alongside you. Uh, in this journey with these young men and women to help form them uh, to be that, uh, that person that God created them to be. So I thank you, parents. Thank you very much for this great joy and privilege. It is a joy to work with them each and every day. I also want to thank our faculty. I'd like all the faculty members who are here this evening to please stand up so we can recognize all of you. Please stand if you're a faculty member of Chesterton Academy of the Sacred Heart. We have Ms. Berlinger, Ms. Lee, It is the lessons and all of these classes and the formation that happens all across this curriculum that, again, instills that virtue, instills that fortitude, the ability, the knowledge to do something like this tonight. And you can hear in the comments the understanding of how all of these things fit together. How the history relates to the songs that we're singing this evening. Right? Uh, how, what is the theology, the philosophy behind that? That we bring to this, to, to, to share this great beauty with you, and ultimately, what is the purpose for doing that? Right? Why do we do this? We know it is to, to praise God, to offer some uh, our joyful duty, right, is to offer him a sacrifice of praise. Uh, so I thank you, all your faculty, for that. And finally, I always have to thank my wife, my family, and my wife for all of her endless support. It would not be possible for me to do this without her. So thank you. The uh, Spring Choir Concert is usually our last major event of the year. So this is the opportunity that I have to recognize uh, a few of our students, our seniors, uh, at this point in time. We have three seniors uh, this year that have, uh, all four of them have been with us for their full four years of high school. Uh, and I would like to recognize each one of them this evening. Ms. Wary, Sophia Wary. Sophia is, uh, has, has 
have this incredible heart, this kind heart towards other people. She's very, very kind and generous towards all of those other people that are around her. And this is something to really come to appreciate, the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of lightheartedness that she has times for things that are worthless. And I appreciate her kind heart and generosity towards those other people that are around her. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Elizabeth Walters. I'd like to recognize Miss Elizabeth Walters. Uh, Miss Walters has, you talk about people who are very good hearted here also. That's true, uh, certainly true of Miss Walters. One of the things that I notice is that she thinks a lot. And she's generally thinking about other people and what can help other people, how she can help other people. So often I have a conversation with her that starts off, Dr. Russell, I was thinking about, and she goes into some long, very long spiel about how she have been thinking about something that she could do to help somebody else. And uh, this is something I really have noticed about her, that great, true, genuine, kind concern that occupies a lot of her thought, her mind about how to help other people to truly be better, truly, truly better, to be more virtuous. That is something that I appreciate and will miss very much about Ms. Walters. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Zalazinski, uh, the elder, Daniel Zalazinski. Uh, Mr. Zalazinski, um, well, let me start with this. Through the Chesterton Schools Network, uh, there's an opportunity for the schools to go on a pilgrimage, generally during their junior year or senior year. And uh, it's generally a Roman pilgrimage, and over the last couple of years, that hasn't been possible. They were going to, to bring it back, and then uh, with some travel challenges, they moved it to, to Portugal, and then they moved it to Mexico. Uh, but Mr. Zalazinski went along with a trip from the network this year. He was the only one from our school, uh, but was there on his pilgrimage to Mexico back in uh, the second half of March. And uh, after he returned, uh, he showed up in a, uh, well, a poncho and a large sombrero. Uh, he brought me back a really, really cool Don Quixote statue. But that's not what I really want to tell you about. What I want to tell you about is that I received an email the next day from the uh, leader of that trip, the executive director of the Chesterton Academy in Chicago, saying, we love Daniel. We absolutely love Daniel. We wish he could finish the semester with us here. And uh, sent me pictures, and just he has gone on and on in the conversation with God about what a great role model he was for the others on that trip, uh, what a joyful spirit that he had, and uh, just how much they delighted in that. And that's something that I very much found to be true. He's been our stage manager for these concerts, for various plays that we've done. He's always right there, that servant's heart, ready to offer a hand anytime there's a big job to be done. Oftentimes others don't want to do. And uh, it's the gentleman together for the, uh, the Catholic Gentleman's Book, uh, various prayer sessions. He's been a great leader to those other young men in the classes below him. He will be sore on this next year. Mr. Zelzinski, thank you for your work. actually a Haitian children's song uh, called Say Ramadan, What a Great Morning. And it's essentially, uh, basically, uh, this uh, song about how the little kids are all getting up and they're super excited in the morning, wake up and see the sunrise and they want to get out and play together. And having spent some time in Haiti, I can very much speak to this, right? That in the midst of great poverty, uh, there is this incredible spirit, particularly among the young children, uh, that I worked with there uh, at this uh, Haitian summer music camp. And there's this constant enthusiasm that they have for everything. They always want to play games. They want to throw a frisbee, or throw a football, or play basketball, or kick a soccer ball, or anything that they have. They play clapping games, and slapping games, and spin, and dance, and run, and jump. And uh, it generally wear you out incredibly. And uh, that is really just what this song is about. It's about skipping, dancing, spinning, jumping, and singing. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this Haitian piece uh, by Franz Casillas, arranged by Nathan Zimor. This is Segona. Be 
really, really, really fast. <laughs> I was very blessed throughout my career before coming to Chesterton Academy uh, to get to have a fairly lengthy career, uh, and still play sometimes, but a fairly lengthy career in the music field as a concert pianist who taught at the uh, collegiate level, primarily music at the collegiate grad level for a number of years. And through that time, um, played hundreds, literally hundreds of concerts, played, sang, conducted hundreds of concerts. I've worked with um, great, great musicians from all over the world. Uh, some of the greatest uh, singers, Broadway opera singers, instrumentalists. And um, it was a great privilege to get to do that. I've had uh, wonderful students from all over the world. But through all of that musical career, lately I have sometimes feared that my contribution to the musical culture of this world that is going to be best remembered is the revival of a little song called The Martian Hop. <laughs> yes, if you were here at our concert last spring, uh, you'll remember a, uh, a, uh, an arrangement that uh, our men's quartet did. An old, early 60s song was made famous by the, I don't know, actually it was famous, I didn't know if it was ever famous. But uh, anyway, it was sung by, recorded by the Red Delts, the Martian Hop, uh, imitating a bunch of Martians come down to have a picnic for the human race. Well anyway, um, we've had a lot of laughs, a lot of fun with that piece here at Chesterton Academy. But the problem with putting a piece like that on a program is that pretty soon people start expecting you to do something even better next time. And while I'm not absolutely certain that we can ever top the Martian hop, we're sure going to try. <laughs> this next piece is a piece by composer John Rutcher, uh, very different than his other style of music. I programmed some of his other music, and very beautiful Christmas songs out of the Christmas concerts. We had a small ladies group do the Candlelight Carol uh, back on the Advent Christmas concert. But this one is a very, very different song. Uh, I've been waiting to do it for a long time, needed the right group of people to do it, and really wanted it to be in something that was kind of an election year, a midterm election year, because, well, it tells the story of this farmer from Maine named Tom Gilligan. And Tom Gilligan's got a beautiful farm, beautiful field, but he has a problem that the birds are eating his wonderful crops. So he does what any great farmer would do. He builds him a scarecrow to persuade the birds to stop eating his crops. But Tom's Gilligan's, uh, Tom Gilligan's scarecrow is very special comes to life, and uh, in fact, the townspeople marvel at it so much that they decide to run it for senator and see how he'll do. And uh, in the midst of this, I guess you'll have to see how he does as we do this piece. But uh, anyway, it, uh, it's a delightful piece uh, with a lot of humor in it, and I uh, hope that you enjoy the humor of this and uh, also potentially a little bit of the political satire that uh, John Rutter has happened to include in this. So this is The Terrible Tale. By the way, this is not an endorsement or a critique of any particular candidate. <laughs> Unless they happen to be a scarecrow. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> that's um, something that we're challenged a lot to do in this school, to be something that we didn't know we could be. That uh, if we're singing something or painting something or doing philosophy and we say, it's too high, the teacher says, jump. <laughs> and we jump and sometimes we grab it by our fingernails and we make it up there and find out that it's very nice up here. And we like it and we'd like to do more of it. And sometimes we get up there and we're like, wow, that's really hot. I think I like that cliff over there better. <laughs> uh, and that's okay too, because we've, we've gotten up on the cliff and you know we have to try it out for a while. But I was thinking about this and about being like who we ought to be. And I guess the question is who ought we be? What kind of person should we be? And, and all these things that we do at Chesterton, we do philosophy, theology, literature, history, music, art, drama, science, math, all these things, they're really cool. And we get challenged to do these things that we didn't know we could do, and to do them well. But that, there's a lot of other schools that have that too. And we, it doesn't matter that we can do any of those things unless we do what God told us to do with them. And if we do that, then they matter enormously. If we're doing what God has told us to do, everything matters. Chesterton has a poem, The Battle of the White Horse. That's one of my personal favorite works we read at Chesterton. It's near the end of sophomore year, and it's about this king of England. <coughs> who is fighting off the Vikings, and he's trying to preserve, preserve, pardon me, preserve Christendom from paganism. There's a great section in there that we all had to memorize at the end of our sophomore year. Freshman, you'll get to it. Um, but everyone else should know this by heart. <clears throat> and my favorite part of the poem is he says, Men of the East may spell the stars and times and times mark, but the men signed of the cross of Christ go gaily in the dark. The men of the East may search their scrolls for true faith and fame, but the men that drink the blood of God go singing to their shame. And I was thinking about this, and that's really, really, I think, what we're doing here. Whether we know it, whether we realize that we're helping each other to do it, I'm sure the teachers probably know they're, they're really smart like that. Um, but that that's what they want us to be. That's what God wants us to be. That if we are men of Christ, men and women of Christ, that we will take these things that we have learned here and take them out of these doors into the world and give them to other people. And, and it's, it's difficult sometimes. It's hard. But that's what this is all about. Paris, to take these things, all these things, and to give of ourselves to others for Christ. Even though it's dark out there, even though we can be like the Venezuelan cowboy and we're out there on the plane and we have our sheep and our guitar and it's dark, we still have our guitar. And that's what this is all about. And Ave Maria has, has been called a lot of things. It's our school song. My good friend Anna Schultz last year, she spoke of it as our school yearbook. And I think it's also something deeper than that. That it's our practice for for life, that we, other schools, they, you know, they have some sort of, like, they say the Pledge of Allegiance, they do other things like that. This is our, our Pledge of Allegiance to our, to each other, to God, and when we sing this song, we're, we're with Mary, giving ourselves uh, to each other, to our families, and preparing to go out into the world and give ourselves to God through all these things that we've learned from our teachers, from each other. And it doesn't matter if it's really high, because that's what God has called us to do and to be. And so I want to thank all of my fellow classmates, especially tonight, for always, always, always pushing me and encouraging me to be the person that God has called me to be. It has been the greatest honor of my life to share these last three years with you. And I hope you know the impact that you have made on my life, on my family's life, on so many people that I'm sure you do not know. And I thank you all for being here tonight, for all your prayers and support for the school and for your presence here. And I hope you enjoy this next song. 
Ave Maria. Thank you all for coming out tonight. God bless.